Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I'm Trace. This week we are talking about alternative energy. Do we need it? Why do we need it? What's the best places you can get alternative energy? What's the best types of alternative energy? And I've got a special guest coming in a little later, Julian Huguet from D News, and he is going to talk to us a little bit about nuclear energy, one of his favorite topics. But first, why do we need alternative energy? Don't we have energy now? Isn't that fine? The reason we need alternative energy is because fossil fuels might be killing everything and everyone. The environment, humans, everything. It's all being damaged by burning fossil fuels. So a fossil fuel, you've probably heard that term before. Maybe you're not actually familiar with what a fossil fuel is, but according to the few definitions that we've found, a fossil fuel is basically a buried combustible geologic deposit. It's organic material that's been exposed to heat and pressure in the Earth's crust over hundreds of millions of years. That could mean a lot of different things. Oil, coal, natural gas. It, basically, it's a hydrocarbon, which is a chain of carbon and hydrogen that can be broken up to create energy. It's known as a non-renewable resource. There's a big difference between non-renewable and renewable energy. Non-renewable resources can't be replenished over a short period. For example, oil takes hundreds of millions of years of heat and pressure to create. And there are four main non-renewable energy sources. So crude oil is a big one, but there's also coal and natural gas. And of course, some of you might not have remembered, uranium, which is a non-renewable energy source for nuclear energy. All non-renewable energy sources come out of the ground, and all fossil fuels are considered non-renewable, but not all non-renewable energy sources are fossil fuels. Remember, there's uranium is tucked in there. Fossil fuels are specifically based on organic material that's been converted into this hydrocarbon-based fuel source. So think ancient animals, plants, a lot of undersea life that died, was left at the bottom of an ancient ocean, or was part of an ancient forest that were then compressed over millions of years and converted into oil. Uranium doesn't count there because uranium is a mineral and has to be mined and refined in order to be used in nuclear energy, not unlike oil that has to be drilled for and refined. But renewable energy sources, on the other hand, are things like solar and wind, and they're replenished naturally over a very short period of time. We're getting new solar energy all the time. There's wind moving around the planet all the time. So if we take all of that stuff out of the ground, we start burning it, we start converting those hydrocarbons into energy, what happens? Isn't that terrible? Isn't it bad for everybody? Yes, of course it is. It's terrible. It's bad for all of the humanity and all of the earth and all of everything. Why? Because it has a byproduct of greenhouse gases. Now, fossil fuels and greenhouse gases are terms that have been thrown around a lot in the last 25 years. Greenhouse gases are a very specific kind of gas or grouping of gases. When you hear the words greenhouse gases, what we're really talking about is mostly carbon dioxide, CO2. But it also could be nitrous oxide, fluorinated gases, which are like CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons, ozone, which is O3, which is produced by electrical motors. And there's also methane, which is 20 times worse than CO2 in terms of its greenhouse effect. So carbon dioxide is a majority of this, though, and carbon dioxide is responsible for basically helping heat up our planet. Greenhouse gases are any gas in the atmosphere that's capable of absorbing infrared radiation, and thereby trapping and holding heat in the atmosphere. Any increase in heat in the atmosphere is uh, called the greenhouse effect. The reason it's called that is because if you've ever been in a greenhouse, it's clear and the sun gets trapped in there and it warms it up. When we get to global warming, which is the entire globe being affected by greenhouse gases, does this all make sense? Because I feel like it should. That's bad. I'm just going to say one more time. Bad. On a day-to-day -day basis, burning of fossil fuels is literally affecting every single person on our planet. It's not just that I'm burning them and the people around me. It's going into the atmosphere and spreading across the whole Earth. And there are all sorts of different pollutants produced by fossil fuel combustion. Carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides. Hydrocarbons are a byproduct of burning hydrocarbons because they don't burn perfectly. Nitrogen oxides and hydrocarbons, for example, combine in the atmosphere on their own to form tropospheric ozone 
ozone, which is a major cause of smog, which irritates the lungs, can cause bronchitis and pneumonia, can decrease resistance to respiratory infections, not to mention it just gets on everything. Have you seen any of these articles where they like wash buildings that are 100 years old and it turns out they were really pretty underneath all that crap? Smog is everywhere and it settles on the earth and causes all sorts of issues. That's just one example of the things that are being caused by pollutants. I mean, if you ask me, it's very difficult to even test for all the things that pollution is doing to us because how do you get away from it? It's everywhere. Carbon monoxide is a byproduct of the combustion of fossil fuels as well. It's just CO. And its exposure can cause headaches. It can put stress on people who have heart disease. And you maybe even have a CO or carbon monoxide detector in your house because it's odorless, it's colorless, and at high concentrations can be deadly. So they want to make sure that you don't have it in your house like a smoke detector. All that being said, non-renewable resources are limited. There's only so many of them. According to the BBC, International organizations estimate that if the world's demand for energy from fossil fuels continues at the present rate, we're going to run out of crude oil in the next 50 years. Natural gas has about 70 more years, and coal has about 250. So if we run out of those things and our entire infrastructure is built on powering the planet by destroying it and burning those things, then what do we do? We're screwed. I'm just going to throw that out there. We're in trouble. We're screwed. And honestly, 50 years, that means I'm still going to be alive and we're going to run out. Possibly. They don't know exactly how much there is, but that's pretty bad. And consumption is only increasing. If we act quick, we can make some changes. But right now, we're making the wrong ones. We're creating new pipelines to move more oil around more quickly. We're drilling in places we never would have drilled before because maybe like the Arctic where they're protecting it before. Now they're like, oh, well, you can just drill there. There's also fracking where they're literally exploding under the ground so they can get little bits of oil and hydrocarbon that's left in there. We are doing all sorts of things to get fossil fuels, and the sun is throwing energy at us constantly all day, every day. Wind is moving around our planet all day, every day. We can use that for energy. And instead, we're, you know, destroying our planet, trying to find that one last bits of energy that we can, we can suck out of there. And of course, that being said, renewable resources are not perfect. Solar energy is very expensive. Wind energy is annoying for some people and can be very expensive as well. And people are worried about things like this because they don't always understand them, which hopefully they will at the end of this series. So make sure you come back tomorrow to find out if there is a best alternative energy. Also tomorrow we're going to have one of my buddies, Julian Hugent, on. He's going to talk to us a little bit about this as well. And if you haven't yet, make sure you check out yesterday's episodes on stereotypes because you know what? There's a lot of information there. Even stereotypes have their own stereotypes. It's crazy. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus, everybody. I'm Trace, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.